welcome to the video. Before we begin, if not already, please take a moment to subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. And click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload. Comment your little heart out. And most of all, please enjoy. Now back to the video. We've all had that friend in high school. You hang out, you do everything together, you share your secrets, your pain, who you like, partners, bros, sisters, BFF. But sometimes you grow apart. It's natural. Your interests change, your personalities clash. Sometimes someone gets possessed by a demon. It happens. But sometimes you just have to say whatevs. Can the writer of Juno do horror? This is Jennifer's body. Amanda Seyfried is Anita. Her few friends call her needy. She's in prison. A tough one, but she's fine. She gets thrown in the hole for at least 90 minutes so she can tell her story. Needy and Jennifer have been friends since like forever. Jennifer became a popular girl. Needy did not. It's refreshing to see a popular girl being so tight with the non-popular girl. Mean girls lied to me. And people, stop making fun of her thumb. It's just childish. Needy blows off hanging with her boyfriend to attend a concert with Jennifer. Low Shoulder is playing and you want to get there before all the good ecstasy is gone. Needy dresses up in case she meets a hot Amish guy. They may not have a lot in common, but you can't argue with the chemistry. The concert is at a bar where discount Chris Pratt is- Oh no wait, that is Chris Pratt. They meet the band Low Shoulder and they seem nice. But Needy overhears the band talking about needing a virgin and assumes they're talking about Jennifer and doing naughty things. And Jennifer is so not a virgin. Okay, they're creeps, but musicians be musicians. It's still rock and roll to me. And I think someone has a crush. Great white. A fire starts and that shuts down the show. And it's actually pretty bad. <laughs> A few people die horribly. In case I can't say that, a few people get unalived horribly. Stupid censorship. Jennifer freezes in shock, but Needy's got her shit together and they escape out a bathroom window. But don't worry, Low Shoulder is okay. The band takes Jennifer away in their party van. Cool guys and virgins don't look at explosions. Jennifer shows up at Needy's house later that night and she ain't right. Covered in blood and acting kinda weird. This is one of the creepiest, most sinister smiles in horror of all time. <laughs> I'm the same way with rotisserie chicken. Straight out of the fridge, so good late at night. <laughs> Costco chicken, am I right? Then she pukes up this black goo and Needy doesn't even hold her hair. I thought they were friends. It's obvious nothing good happened with low shoulder. You know they charge for autographs. Whatever Jennifer's going through, Needy isn't hating all of it. But the next day, Jennifer is just fine. Good night. Jennifer totally downplays the whole chicken black vomit thing. And she's no longer bothered by the fire that killed eight of their friends and a bunch of other people. Anybody that we know? We know everyone. School is very understanding about losing one's classmates, but they still don't get the day off. Okay, who brought the steady cam to school? Jennifer seduces the school's football captain. Granted, teenage boys don't need much encouragement. Touch. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer lures him into the woods where animals come out and watch. This is weird. It's kind of like a kinky Snow White. <laughs> then she disembowels him. Wow, that Disney's getting edgy. Jerry Blank is Needy's mom. That's the tweet. Turns out college tuition is non-refundable. Jennifer's so evil, she swims in the lake naked. You didn't hear anyone complaining. Tastes like burning. Everyone at school is bummed out from recent events, except Jennifer, who's like, whatevs. Remember when she was in Transformers until she called Michael Bay Hitler? Jennifer's not looking so good. Turns out Low Shoulder is lying about the night of the fire, making themselves out to be heroes who helped people escape, which did not happen but some people believe everything they read on Wikipedia. It's true. It's on the Wikipedia. My skin is breaking out and my hair is dull and lifeless. Yeah, Machine Gun Kelly has that effect. Jennifer invites Colin the goth over for dinner. Huh. He comes in expecting a little squeaky squeaky, but Jennifer wants to eat first. First? <laughs> Instead of... Ah, no! He died as he lived, bleeding by candlelight. 
Needy senses this during her own dick sesh with her boyfriend. He didn't notice at first that she was freaked out, because her eyes are always that big. Jennifer's looking healthier since she's eaten. Same. My blood sugar can tank if I don't have a snack once in a while. Now let's confirm what guys have suspected what happens during girl sleepovers since the beginning of time. Needy pulls away, disappointing well over a dozen viewers. Jennifer tells Needy what happened the night of the fire. She was still kind of messed up when the band took her away. In a nutshell, they're evil. Grab Jennifer to sacrifice to Satan and get fame and fortune. They needed a virgin to sacrifice. But Jennifer was not a virgin. I think they can sue. They got the ritual from Google, so that tracks. So the ritual didn't 100% work right. They still got the fame and fortune, but since Jennifer wasn't a virgin, the demon inhabiting her body decided to move in. Afterwards, Jennifer was a little hungry, so she ate an exchange student. Another benefit of the ritual, Jennifer has a Wolverine healing factor. Needy's research confirms that not being a virgin led to Jen being possessed. It's literally damned if you do and damned if you don't. Jennifer is now a succubus who must feed on flesh and can only be killed when she is hungry and weak. Chip, it's not safe for us to be together right now. Jennifer snaps up Chip on his way to the dance. Jen wastes no time going to town on Chip. I bid it Chip. She takes Chip to an abandoned pool, which still has water in it for some reason. Think of it as soup. Needy walks in on Jennifer's dinner, and sometimes you just have to say, I told you so. Also, damn girl, what that mouth do? They fight in the pool. Chip gives Needy some mace, but Jennifer seems much more effective. And she can fly now. They fly now! You could have anybody that you want, Jennifer. Why Chip? Is it just to tick me off? You can almost transplant this dialogue in a typical teen drama about boy stealing and insecurity. The metaphor is strong, but oh so obvious. I thought you only murdered boys. I go both ways. Looks like Chip pokes Jennifer after all. Jennifer's weak, which is why she doesn't just finish off Needy, and Chip dies anyway. Later, Jennifer's going through the yearbook slash meal plan. Needy bursts in and tries to kill Jennifer. And during the fight, Jennifer bites Needy on the neck. But Needy has a box cutter. Do you buy all your murder weapons at Home Depot? X marks the thought. Ow! Needy takes back the BFF necklace because they are so over. Then she stabs Jennifer in the heart with the box cutter. It would have been funnier with scissors. Ow! Right then, Jennifer's mom comes in, and there's Needy sitting over Jennifer with a box cutter in her hand. Awkward, yeah. The demon is killed, but Jennifer's dead. I mean, really dead. And Needy doesn't have a shred of proof about anything. I'm a different person now. But Jennifer's bite gave Needy some spooky powers. But if you're bitten by a demon, you just might absorb some of the demon's abilities. Like levitation and super strength. She escapes, hitches a ride with Lance Hendrickson, no lie, and she tracks down a much more successful low shoulder and brutally murders them over the end credits. And then she goes looking to partner up with that girl with the vaginal teeth. That was Jennifer's body. Jennifer's body subverts traditional horror tropes. It explores friendship, jealousy, and high school drama. A lot of stuff you don't typically see in a horror movie. The characters have a little more depth, their relationships have a little more definition, and it makes you care about them that much more. Megan Fox is stand out as Jennifer, seductive yet monstrous, friendly to non-popular girls, but still has enough of that edge to still kind of be a little mean. In this movie, she's the ultimate mean girl. Amanda Seyfried is convincing as a girl caught between loyalty and the realization that her friend has drifted apart. Way, way apart. J.K. Simmons is in this. That's it. He's awesome in everything. Jennifer's body received mixed reviews upon release, and some critics just didn't get it. It's not a straight horror film, nor is it a CW drama. If you go in expecting one or the other, you're going to struggle to grasp. However, it is now regarded as a cult favorite. Even without the supernatural elements, the themes are relatable. Friendship, jealousy, sex, parts of everyone's high school experience. Except mine. Not everyone may resonate with Diablo Cody's specific writing style. Some critics find her dialogue too sharp, too stylized, or just too honest. I mean, who really talks like that? Look at me. I may look like I got my shit together, but you're looking at the result of scripting and editing. See? Flawless. However, it is a distinct style, and we, and we expect a hyper level of clever when it comes to entertainment dialogue anyway. The climax in a simple girl's bedroom 
I should rephrase that, but I'm not gonna. A place they no doubt hung out a lot, and not a large, grand environment like a warehouse, or a rooftop, or a big spooky mansion. It just highlights the intimate relationship between our two friends, and it's an ironic place for that friendship to die. Jennifer's Body is Four Bs, a refreshingly different and pretty fun horror movie, blended with the quirk of high school and lots of blood. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, the bell, you know, the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles! Mm -hmm.